Welcome back to Home Lab Networks. My name is AJ, and this is my end of year for 2025 tour of my Home Lab server rack. From the start of the year now till the end of the year, there has been a few major changes in this rack, and it's changed back houses once again, back to its original house. But, but as far as hardware and the servers themselves, there's been some upgrades happen from the start of the year to now, and let's get into it. And let's just not talk about the cables running out of this hole through the wall. We'll get that fixed one day. It works for now. So we'll start at the top, top of the rack. We've got this uh, monitor here. It's about 12 years old. That's what's up here. Um, basically, I use it as like my like, like a KVM. So I've got cables in the back of the monitor. A DVI, VGA, VGA and HDMI that are plugged into the servers. And so if I need to see what's going on with the server because I can't access it through the network. I put it on the screen and I can run the tests from there. Now, first things first, this is my TP-Link router and modem. I don't like how they're together, but that's what I've got for now. And for the moment, it's working. The first blue cable is the WAN cable, wide area network, that leads into my first patch panel over here. As you can see, it says modem, and this, and this connects into my uh, switch one, my first switch. It says switch two, but it's meant to be switch one. Got the modem into the patch panel, then into the switch that provides ne the network activity for my servers and devices across my network. And then obviously I've got all my hardware devices all plugged into my patch panel that plug in to the switch. And then as you can see how this switch is set up on the top ports and where they're uh, positioned it's very hard to take advantage of the first row of ports as I would really need these ports moved over here but that's okay we've just added in a second patch panel and then I've also got another LAN or a data cable so I've got this red one that plugs into the second patch panel down the bottom here and then that plugs into my second switch and same story as before, it provides the network activity to the switch for more devices. So at this point in time, I've already got my guacamole server plugged into the switch and then later on down the track, I can add more devices as I go. So what servers am I running at the end of 2025? It hasn't changed too much from the last home lab tour I did, which was only a couple of months ago. But from the start of the year until now, there's been a, been a big change in that time frame. So under all my patch panels and switches, we go to server one, which is my MC server or my Minecraft server. Yes, you can virtualize this absolutely. You know, I agree with it if you've got the hardware. But from my experience and the amount of mods my son uses on Minecraft, it was just easier to do a bare metal server and I've had no problems with it. But in server one, we have an Asus B 550 MA Wi-Fi 2 motherboard with Corsair's Vengeance 32 gigabytes at 32 megahertz a second for the RAM and then for the, for the CPU it's running a AMD Ryzen 5 5500 with a MSI Gaming GeForce GT 1030 GPU that um, combination of hardware for a Minecraft server on a local network runs um, absolutely fine. Server 2. Server 2, the last uh, uh, two months I've been doing a lot of work on. This originally was just a, uh, just a testing server where I will test out new applications or new hypervisors or new operating systems and just have fun with it, play around with the parts, etc. Now, over the last couple weeks and uh, two couple months, I've pretty much turned it, in, turned it into a cloud gaming server which if you haven't seen it already, I've got videos covering this whole project, so I'll have the description below. But it's my cloud gaming server. So it runs Proxmox, and then it runs a Windows virtual machine on it, and then I can host games on my network across my devices. So the hardware that it's running is a motherboard, is an MSI B450 MA Pro Max 2. It's got Corsair's Invention 32 gigabytes of RAM at 32 megahertz. The CPU is an AMD 7 5700X 
with the GPU of MSI GeForce RTX 3050. Um, a low profile because it's only a three year server. So you get, you're limit, limited to the GPU size that can fit it in this case. But as I said, um, those components work fantastic for my cloud gaming server and I've really had no pro problems with it. The only problem I had was I ran out of storage. So I do actually have the two terabyte drive up here just for the game files and game storage. So I will plan to chuck that in eventually. And then under my cloud gaming server, I have my 4U server case, and this is my main Proxmox server. So I have done a software video on my server rack, which I'll have linked on the screen here right now, that goes through the applications and services that I self-host in my home lab. But this is my Proxmox server that runs all those services. And for the hardware on this, we are rocking a ASUS B 550MA Wi-Fi 2 motherboard, same as MZ server over here. It's also running Corsair's Vengeance 64 gigabytes of RAM at 32 megahertz a second. These are all pretty much AIM4 machines and I've got no problem with AIM4, it works great, no problems from that. Um, the CPU on the Proxmox server is an AMD Ryzen 5 5500 with a GPU from AMD Sapphire RX 65 XT and its main job is to pretty much just self-host the services that I run in my home lab and with those hardware components all working working together it does a great job. I've just done a GPU, GPU pass-through on this server for my Windows 11 virtual machine and it runs great. And it doesn't use too much resources on the applications that I run on the server. Now this um, server here is an enterprise server. This one's the IBM X3250. I think uh, from memory it's back from 2009. It's very, very, very old server. Um, it's in retirement now as I've built these other more updated servers, but I can't seem to get rid of it. It all works. Trays and everything all work together. Um, but my plan is I want to chuck in a, chuck in a couple drives in this server um, I'm gonna put the Proxmox backup operating system on it so I can back up my Proxmox to this server. And then it's just a, another server, another backup server to have my backup stored. As down the bottom here, I do have my NAS that backs everything. It backs up server two and server four. And then my MC Minecraft server that runs Casa OS. I just back up to my main machine and then transfer it on, onto my NAS with my other computers on my network. And then I've got my Dow PowerEdge R410. Again, I think from the BIOS, it was 2012, 2009 to 2012, I believe. Um, she's in retirement now. This used to be my main Proxmox server. And that's, this used, used to be the backup server before I, I built any, any of these machines. It's been subscribe for a while you um, know that but at this point in time these two machines are in retirement and so my server rack used to be pretty loud and it's pretty quiet at the moment, moment. this is with um, main servers running and the switches with the fans on and we'll just see how loud it is So it's not too bad, that's how it runs 24 seven. We'll just turn the fans off because the fans are making a lot of the noise. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. But I like to leave the fans on because this room has that big window here, door window. And when it gets hot outside, it gets super hot inside. So they've got the air kind of on for the pretty much just for the server rack to keep them nice and cool. And we also kept the fans on to get some airflow traveling down. So under my two enterprise servers, I've got my one new server that I've just built in the last couple of weeks. Now this one, this one is running in Guacamole, which is a remote desktop server application that allows me to remote into all my servers on my network, even through RDP, VNC, SSH, etc. It's got everything and it works great. That's its only job, it's my remote server, pretty much. And it's running an ASUS Prime H310 Plus Mini ITX motherboard. It's got Corsair's, Corsair's Vengeance 
RAM at, at 16 gigabytes of memory. The CPU is an Intel Core i5-8400 at 2.8 gigahertz with six cores. And it's for storage, it's only got a 500 gigabyte hard drive as I don't need to store anything on this server. And down the bottom, I've just got my little Synology NAS DS220J. Um, it's a pretty slow NAS compared to um, for today's standards, but it's pretty much used as a backup server for my main servers. So all the, all the backups go onto to this. And then from that, I, back, I put the backups onto Google Drive. So I've got backups everywhere. So in the event something does happen, I've got backups and a Synology and Google Drive. And then in the next couple of weeks, we'll have Proxbox backup running on this IBM server. And that's my little server rack uh, topology diagram I've done for my home web documentation. And then sorry if it's bad quality, but the washing machine is running, so it might start to drain soon. But just on top of the fridge in the laundry is my CCTV DVR camera box that runs all the cameras at the house. Now, if you don't know, I live in Australia, and Australia in, in Australia's internet is absolutely garbage. So, if you're planning on coming over here, just be aware of that. Our internet is trash, unless you get the upgrade. So, every ISP is pretty much doing free upgrades to get fiber running into your house. It's called fiber to the premises. And then once you have that installed, you're pretty much guaranteed a decent speed. I can reach up to a gig, one gigabyte of download speed. I've only got the 500 planner at the moment, as that's all I really need at this point in time. But um, the technician comes here, installs this device on your in your house. And then we've got the fiber cable here. My, my beautiful fiber cable runs in and runs into this device and then I've got to run it cat6 cable from this device that goes excuse a mess but it goes under the house under there and then that reaches back into my rack in the lounge room so that's my fiber connection here and this works fantastic no issues with it and I love it so there you have it guys that's my home lab network rack for the end of 2025. I'm pretty happy with the way things have gone this year with the server rack and how my home lab is coming along and I can't wait to see what 2026 brings along in the home lab journey. So if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to give it a like rating, consider subscribing if you haven't already and I'll catch you guys in the next home lab video. And also I just want to say a big thank you to all the recent subscribers, all the new viewers. The channel is growing and it's growing quickly and we're getting some, some traction. And I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who comes by and does like, subscribe and comment. Um, it makes this worth doing. So thanks guys. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.